Hallelujah. I welcome you again to this time of encounter with the Holy Spirit. I always desire for encounters with the Holy Spirit. But it's absolutely important. God is committed to our desires and expectations. If a prayer without expectations, without desire, is barren, we must have a desire. That's what the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. People don't really understand that. It says first what you desire, and then you pray. He says it is settled with God. That's what he says. Which means going to prayer without a desire, without any expectation, is just uh, uh, an exercise in futility. Something must drive you to prayer. Something must drive you to the altar of prayer. And that is what makes heaven to begin to intervene. Praise God. So I pray today that you have a desire for encounters, daily encounters with the Holy Spirit. Paul said that I may know you more after 33 years in ministry. To have more encounters. He prayed it, he desired it, and he had it severally in his life. Oh yes, that's the way it works. Moses prayed. He said, show me your face. Show me. I want to have an encounter with you. And the Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 7, And God showed his ways to Moses and then his acts to the children of Israel. Divine encounter puts you in touch with the secrets of God. And the secrets of God make men. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. He said the secret is belong unto the Lord. The one he reveals to men are their possessions for their children. If you don't have the secret, then you become inferior in the affairs of life. Job 13 verses 1 and 2 say, I know what you know, I'm no longer inferior to you. And God keeps secrets. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of mysteries. Mark chapter 4 verse 11. It says, for those who are without, it is not given to them. But those who are within, it is given to them to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Mysteries are sacred secret facts that puts you ahead. And that is the secret of God's power. The more of the secrets of God you have, the better for you. In Daniel chapter 19, Daniel in the night time in his dream, God came and revealed secret to him. And in Daniel chapter 2 verse 22, he now said, he testified to it, that God reveals deep and secret things. May your eyes be open to deep and secret things. We are talking about your eyes. It's not the physical eyes. The spiritual eyes, they are not here. They are within. They come from the subconscious mind, from the heart. May your heart be opened. That's what he's saying. And begin to see. Because that's where the thing happens. It's what you see you can get. Genesis chapter 13 verse 15. And it is what you see within you. Okay? It is important. When things come into your eye gate, your ear gate, your feelings and all that, they enter, if you allow them to your mind, and from your mind to the subconscious mind, that was sub means below mind. So the below mind is actually the one that controls life, which is the heart. I pray today that my God shall open your eyes, your eyes of understanding. Psalm 119 verse 144, he said, give me understanding that I might live. Without understanding, you merely exist on earth. You need understanding, and understanding comes through encounters with the Holy Spirit. That's the way it works. In Luke chapter 24 verse 45, he entered where they were, and then the Bible says the first thing he did was to open their understanding. So in three years he taught them, but the understanding, the understanding was shallow. He now came after his resurrection and opened their understanding. And I pray God will open your understanding today. In the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus, that you have an encounter with God, that will make you understand people around you, understand what the church of God is all about, understand God's timetable for now, understand the 
prophecies, especially dimensions prophecies of God, so that you don't speak anyhow. So they begin to talk the way heaven talks. You don't speak the language of man. You begin to become a true ambassador of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. That's what it is. Reconciling men to God. And I pray your eyes will be opened. The eyes of your understanding. Psalm 119 Verse 8, he said, Open down my eyes, O God, that I might see great and wondrous things out of thy law. That's what it is. That's what an encounter is. You now begin to say, I see, I see. And it's so liberating. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9, he said, The righteous is delivered through knowledge. In other words, without you having the requisite knowledge, the, thank you, uh, excuse me, the, 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 if you don't have the requisite knowledge, then you see you're stagnated in the affairs of life. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Not because the enemy is strong, because they lack knowledge. Okay? Knowledge in Hebrew is the same word as light. Ignorance is the same word as darkness. So when you don't have the requisite knowledge, you are in darkness. John chapter 8 verse 32, he said, the truth you know shall set you free, shall make you free, shall preset your freedom. He said, you shall know the truth. That word know there, he said, you shall have an intercourse with the truth. You, are, you, should, you have an encounter with the truth. That intercourse is like where a man is meeting the wife. Then naturally, the wife gets pregnant. So you will have an intercourse with the truth. Then you have the pregnancy of the truth, which will be in your subconscious, your heart. And after there, you carry the seed of the Holy Ghost and you begin to speak it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and then your whole life is driven that way. It's what is your subconscious that drives your life, that drives your language. Praise God. So you, you, there is no shortcut to this. There is no negotiation, no substitute to having encounters with God. Because the more encounters you have with God, okay, the more your life gets better. You shall know the truth. You shall have an encounter with the truth. You shall have an intercourse with the truth. Because when you have an encounter, you get pregnant with the seed of the truth. And the truth you have an encounter with is the truth that processes, that makes, the words it makes, the way you make bread, processes you, processes your freedom. That's why that Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9 says, the righteous is delivered through knowledge. And in verse 36 of John chapter 8, he said, Whom the Son, that is the word of God, has set free, is free indeed. So there is no substitute for having an encounter with the word of God by his Spirit. So we need to get through to it. That is the sustainable thing in life. Every other thing is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. There is only one solid rock and it is the word of God the ancient of days. So the moment we begin to go into the word of God, then we now understand why First John chapter 1 verse 5 says that God is light. And why Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says we are light. Because when you come to that area, you begin to move by the speed of light. You don't move by the speed of man. Then you begin to understand what divine shortcut is all about. And that is what it is. So, divine shortcut is simple. Let's read our writer scripture, Romans chapter 9, verse 38. This is the third part. And it will be good to listen to the other parts. Romans chapter 9, verse 28 says, For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. That's cut it short. That's the shortcut. What ought to take longer period? God will cut it short. So it will take lesser time with you. The whatever has been prolonged in your life, God will just put it aside, destroy it. And whatever has been delayed, God will destroy it and bring a shortcut so that you begin to recover. So that you are around those who are in front of you. It is not who that have started. It is who that is in front. At least Goliath was there 40 days tormenting the children of Israel and then for the same 40 they saw and the armies of Israel they were still there 40 days they were there before David came a man with an encounter with God with the spirit of God when he came he didn't see Goliath like others 
He knew that God has his fastenings, that God can do anything. Mark chapter 10, verse 27, with men it may be impossible, but not with God. And the time God deals with impossibilities, that's what you call divine shortcut. That is God's own route, God's own way of dealing with things. So that stop you from running around the same circle, breaking the circle of hardship, the circle of stupidity, the circle of suffering, and then putting you on the right movement. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6. He said, you have run around this mountain too much. Turn and take your journey. Turn. That is what shortcut is all about. Giving you a supernatural turnaround in the shortest possible time. And then you begin to move forward. Fast forwarding you. David came very late after 40 days. His brothers were there, well armed. Saul was there well and Goliath was there well armed. But at the end of the day, God intervened, used his sling, used the, the stone. Can you imagine? How would the stone, how come this man was shielded? Well shielded. But God had to use his own shortcut, his own route, and took the stone to the unprotected area of Goliath and brought Goliath down. That's divine shortcut. David came late, but he was the one that God spread the fame. The women began to sing. Began to sing. David began, became the main person. I see God bringing into your life his divine shortcut. And as he's bringing into your life your divine shortcut, those you are looking up onto will soon be looking up onto you. That is what it's all about. What you must notice is that, number one, natural things have a time lag. Natural things takes time. When a woman is pregnant, it's supposed to be for nine months. That is the time. When she's in labor, it has a timing. That is the way it works. Let, let, let me read this scripture for you. In uh, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 7, he said, Behold, she travailed she brought forth before she travailed she brought forth before her pain came she was delivered of a man child this is divine shortcut he said before she travailed she brought forth she was supposed to travail and then bring forth she was supposed to have pain and then bring forth divine shortcut is god setting aside the protocols of men, the natural things that are put in place and to favor you. He will do it his own way, not man's way. He will move you forward. He will fast track you. His own way. He can compress time. He can set aside anything. He lives in eternity. But everything on earth, he has timed them. But he has perfect control of them. That is the reality. And he can compress time if he wants to. He can extend time if he wants to. Divine shortcut is when God compresses time, sets a time outside the protocols of men. The natural thing is for a woman to first have labor, labor pains and travel before the child. But he said before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. This is divine shortcut. That is God made sure there was no travel. God made sure there was no pain. They look at verse 8. He said, Who had had such a thing? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth bring, be made to bring forth in one day? He said, Can the earth be made to bring forth in one day? So, naturally speaking, the earth, there is a time to plant, there is a time to harvest. He said, can the earth be made forth to bring forth in one day? No. But the shortcut of God can set aside every law to bring the purpose of God to bear in anywhere on the earth, in the lives of people, in families, in corporate bodies. And that is what God asked me to bring to you today. He is the God of shortcuts. He is the God of speed. Last month was our month of divine speed. 
this month is our month of divine settlements so I'm praying for you that you will not miss the shortcut of God can you see that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 do you know what happened right there God looked at man he said to man now take over the whole earth the plantings it took just six days for God to make the whole earth and the whole world but the amazing thing is that by the sixth day man was made everything had grown on earth ah! this is divine shortcut that's what is asking here shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day God did it Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 he said, is there anything too difficult for God? Verse 17, he said, ah, Lord, there is nothing too difficult for you. That is the way it is. When God comes, setting aside impossibilities, Mark chapter 10, verse 27, with God, nothing shall be impossible. That is divine shortcut. God's own route, God's own way, making a way where there seems to be no way, breaking the shackles of satanic delay, satanic pain, satanic circles over your life that is the way it works i congratulate you for even listening to this now he says or shall a nation be born at once for as soon as zion traveled she brought forth her children i want you to know that god is a god of second chance is a god of divine shortcuts Human beings, if you set your short course, you cut your life short. That's what Biblical cells said. So you don't need your short short, you don't need the shortcut of men. If men say this is a shortcut, don't take it. But when God comes with his shortcut, you can be sure at the end of the day you'll be happy. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. He said, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. So God makes your ending to be better than your beginning. You may have started badly, but you end well. When divine shortcut comes, things change in your life. That's the way it happens. Look at that. Is that not God working? Everything must change positively. Job chapter 8 verse 7, he said, Though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. Psalm 71 verse 21, he said, I shall comfort you. Give you comfort. All around comfort. So who will do that? comfort you. That is divine shortcut. He knows how he's going to do it. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11 He says, I shall make you a thousand times better. A thousand times better. That's divine shortcut. You can do it yourself. God wants to do it. Making you a thousand times more. Ah! So you can understand it. And I see you getting better and better and better and better. So, no matter I want you to understand that with God, time can be compressed just compressed like this so when we're talking about divine short call that's what it is when god intervenes in a matter when the hand of god is involved in a matter when we're talking of divine short court we are talking when god of when god fast tracks somebody of when god fast forward somebody of when god hastings a matter in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 he said, I will hasten. That word hasten. I will hasten. That is short, divine shortcut. I will hasten my word to perform it. Which means no delay. No delay. And in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, he goes again to say, I will hasten it in his time. What a mighty God we serve. In the uh, first two uh, series, we have seen in John chapter 6, verse 17 to 21 how God hastened verse 21 Jesus came into the boat and in a twinkling of an eye without delay just immediately suddenly the boat moved from there to their destination in the land there was no break what a mighty God we saw we saw in Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 39 to 40 how the Holy Spirit caught up with Philip and moved him to Azotus divine shortcut and we have seen in first kings chapter 18 verse 46 how ahab uh, ahab was on chariots and horses and elijah was on foot 20 to 21 mile race on foot 
and then he outran Ahab and his chariots and got to the gates of Jezreel before Ahab. How? Divine shortcut. God hastened it. The secret is in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 12. He said, I know that the Lord, the Holy Spirit will carry you. And that is our rider word. The Holy Spirit will carry you. That is shortcut. Carry you through a shortcut. I'm still praying for you that the Holy Spirit will carry you. Carry your marriage. Carry your spouse. Carry your children. Carry your calling and your ministry. Carry all that appertains to you from where you are to where you ought to be in the affairs of life. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray you will not make unpardonable mistakes. And another example I want you to look at is Genesis chapter 27 verse 20. Isaac looked at Jacob. He said, how have you found this so quickly? So quickly, which shortcut did you use? And Jacob said, the Lord brought it to me. May the Almighty God bring such things that appertains to your greatness to you in the name of Jesus. May you not miss it again in the affairs of life. In the matchless name of Jesus, how come you found it so quickly? What is the shortcut? The shortcut is that the Lord brought it to me. No argument. Nobody can argue with evidence. And with this, you begin to have the evidences of the gospel. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 3 says, 10 men will come touching your skirt, saying, take me to your God. You have been talking of your God, now men will see your God in your life. Divine shortcuts shall be real in your life. In the name of Jesus, I want to let you know number three, the things that take time with men will be speedily delivered by God. That's the way it works. Mark chapter 10 verse 27. With men, it can be possible, not with God. Another thing I want you to take note of is that to see God's agenda come to pass in your life, you must know what Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 13 says. It says, and if you want to enjoy shortcut, if you want to enjoy the agenda of God, you want to enjoy his interventions, he says you must one, love God, two, serve God with all your heart, all your might, all your soul. That's the secret. That is your own. You must partner with God. You must make God a priority in your life. You must be in the kingdom of God so that you can be far above all the principalities and powers. So you be on the same page with God so that the Holy Spirit can carry you on. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. He said, we are seated with Jesus Christ at the right hand side of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 and 21 makes it clear. He said, far above. All principalities and power, all the rubbish, all the yamanama on earth. So when you are there, the Holy Spirit will be carrying you. It is your choice to get back to God. Job chapter 22 verse 23. He said, return unto me and I will return unto you. Yes, Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 1. He said, if you be with the Lord, the Lord will be with you. So it is as simple as that. And I pray you will not make unpardonable mistakes again. And the Lord will begin to destroy every rubbish, every yamanama in your life in the name of jesus so i want you to take note of this when it comes to execution of a task all is required is the hand of god and the hand of god is what we are praying into your system today and the hand of god is going to come upon you like never before in the matchless name of jesus in genesis chapter 24 from verse 10 to 20 you will see how god brought the shortcut because the young man prayed for speed that is eliezer prayed for speed he was sent to go and bring a wife for isaac and then when he went he didn't do any other thing he would do he prayed for divine speed divine speed means divine shortcut that is god's own way that's the simple way it works so when you have divine speed you are hearing a divine sh shortcut that is you are not going the word of men you are not going through the root of men okay and satan will not give you a root so it is that way and God caught everything. So what he was going to the city to look for, found him at the well. That is divine shortcut. And I'm praying today that that job, that contract, that thing you so desire passionately to make your laughter complete, the Almighty God shall bring it to you. 
Genesis 27, 20. The Lord brought it to me. The Almighty God shall bring it to you. And all wasters and destroyers shall forever be far from you. I soak in the precious blood of the Lamb. And I decree the devil shall never use you to prosper his agenda this year. Shall not use your children to punish you. Shall not use things closest to you to punish you. Shall not use yourself to punish yourself so that you will not be an enemy to yourself. I pray today that the hand of the Lord shall carry you from where you are to where you ought to be in the affairs of life. Carry your children, carry your spouse, carry all the buildings of your life according to the will of God to where you ought to be. In the name of Jesus, you will never again labor in vain and you will not labor to sorrow. In the name of Jesus, you shall not eat the bread of sorrow again. Beginning from now, it shall be strength unto strength, holiness unto holiness, power unto power in your life, glorious changes in your life as you hook onto the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Changing, changing, he's changing, changing me. His likeness and image to perfect in me the love of God shown to the world. He's changing, changing me. That is what is there for you now. Changing for the better and the best, not changing the other way round. I appreciate your time. I will meet you again tomorrow as we go deeper and deeper. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people, touching lives positively, and serving our God. That is what it is. Don't live for yourself. I am Fresh Fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the world with God's love and God's presence. Thank you. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations! You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.